Hey, Ben here with Stu on the Lake. Uh, hello again. I, 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 it's busy, busy around here. I, I'm back down in Iowa for a week, so hopefully I can get the four or five videos that I've got going uh, taken care of and uh, loaded. But here's here's one on the feather, and I'll show you a little bit about what I've been up to. Um, next week on Tuesday, I was told my dust collector is going to come in. That's a whole uh, series when I set that up. But uh, here's a, a review of feathers and how I do feathers and uh, give you a little bit of overview. This is something that I've had sitting here and I just haven't had a chance to edit it. So what have I been doing uh, in the meantime? So last week I had an order for three baby birds uh, coming to the gallery down in Madison. So there's one done, two almost uh, done, and three. Here's a, a competition, or I, I'm sorry, this is a, a piece that, uh, a commission piece that I did not film that I had to do. It's a smoothie and uh, turned out absolutely gorgeous. I did not film it. Uh, this is all you get of it because I was in a hurry uh, to get the piece done and get it out. It's just a smoothie. It has no feather detail. The, the details in the painting and then uh, the shape of him. And uh, he's kind of an old, old school shape there. So. Uh, that took a little bit of time. You see down in the corner there, my son actually did uh, bring the raven, and uh, we're going to pop into the raven in a second. But uh, here's a here's a one that's called a smoothie, um, and this is a um, canvas back. So my son finally brought up the uh, raven that I did 25, 30 years ago. You can see his beak has been chewed off by a cat. I don't know why cats do that, but there's one for a reference piece. This piece came back from the gallery, and it's a pintail drake, and someone took his pintail. So I make the pintails that stick into the, the back of it because they're long and you'd knock them off and break them otherwise, but uh, someone disappeared with the tail. So he needs a new tail in order to go back down into the, into the gallery. So back to feathers. So if you're looking at a feather, you want to carve a feather, or burn a feather, or stone a feather, you first you got to figure out what a feather does. So a lot of people do feathers and they don't look realistic. The reason they don't look realistic is because they don't put the splits in. You can see there, I just built some splits in there. Feathers don't naturally lay down. You see birds, ducks and geese and uh, songbirds, all of them preening and what they're doing is they're realigning the barbs in these feathers. Each of the back of those little uh, uh, barbs that stick out there uh, will hook together and form a feather. So if you want to make it realistic, get yourself a real feather. Be sure to put a couple of splits in there. So this is uh, no feather in particular and I kind of jumped ahead. I did this shape, which is not difficult. I did not do it flat. It's got kind of waves in it and it's got a little bit of a concave to the front. Now I'm burning the center barb in there. You can do this without the burning. You could do all of this with stones. Now the first thing you're going to say is uh, I've got that pin canted a little bit off to the right and I'm, I'm burning, kind of making it flat on the right hand side of that as you're looking at it right now. Now as I get towards the end, obviously the barb in the center is going to be finer. And I'm not that concerned about it. And the reason I'm not, I'll show you later on in the video. I kind of want to fade down to nothing, but I can always go back and, uh, hey, we got some thunder in the background down here. I can always go back and, and get that a little bit tighter as I'm doing each individual barb left and right on that. So the center doesn't have to be perfect the first time. It, it needs to be referenced in the ballpark, but you can always uh, burn up to that or uh, correct that line. So it would be wider on the part on the right there where if it was an old pen, if you, if you had a feather pen, and you can really see uh, where I'm kind of burning that back into that. So I've, I've got the barb burned in, and the, the center barb, and now I'm going to put some, some reference lines in. You, you, you'll notice uh, kind of the ones I'm throwing in there now are where I might want to throw a split in. And the split is those uh, where the feathers are not aligned, and that's going to give it that realistic uh, look about it. Now. 
through the center of this video, there's a couple more things I, I stuck in. This is kind of a hodgepodge. Um, hey, Jordy, your uh, your basswood is packaged up. I brought it back down uh, down here to Iowa. It's a nice little box with stuff in there, and I'm going to send it uh, from down here tomorrow. I had to go get some more tape and that sort of stuff. Why well, I was going to do it the other day, and then I I noticed uh, when I was out at the woodlot in the, in the farm that the duck pen needed some work, so I spent the day messing around with the duck pen instead of mailing stuff off. And uh, someone else is going to get some, and they don't know that yet. And then, uh, hey, Mike, uh, I sent you an email, and uh, uh, when I put those, those other two boxes together, I had a bunch of extra pieces, and I, I threw it in there. So I sent you an email, send me, send me an address, and, and Mike, you know who I'm talking about. I'm assuming you're going to watch this. You've been loyal to the channel all along. So send me an address and I'll, I'll get the box a box off for you. And I even threw a, a baby bird pattern in there for you. Not a pattern, but a blank. I don't really use patterns. So this is a diamond or a sapphire. Uh, or, I'm sorry, it's a sapphire or a ruby uh, burr. And I'm just kind of taking this down on each side and getting up there to the barb. I'm smoothing that out because I'm getting ready to burn. Uh, as, I, as I'm doing this, we've got all kinds of stuff going on in the world. The COVID, the kids are going back to school. People are freaking out um, on where they're, whether their kids wear a mask or don't wear a mask. I, I can tell you we're still hauling people that aren't vaccinated uh, to get, uh, uh, still having issues. And the hospitals are still full. Uh, it's kind of a shame. And then we've got the Afghanistan stuff going on. So what's the answer to all that? Uh, art. Sit down in the corner, quiet by yourself, paint, draw, carve. And if you're going to carve, there's no better way to do it than, than watch this channel and subscribe. Or uh, watch Jordy Johnson. Watch Mike over at Stennis Sticks. Um, Chainsaw Guys. Uh, Uncle Kevin is over there along with uh, with his partner and his, his name is escaping me right now. Ryan Cook, there we go, Ryan Cook. Uh, and Jordy thinks the world of Ryan Cook and those guys. Uh, you look down in the description, there's a, there's a bunch of them in there. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead. So here is a Dremel um, cutoff wheel. And I, I use these quite a bit and I, uh, for various different things, but this one's, I, I'm using it for splits. I'm putting the splits in the feather there. So there's my burner. Came from PGL Enterprises. There's several uh, burners. Razorback is probably the most famous. And uh, you can see I'm just going to start little fine lines up against the barb. Now earlier I was telling you that that barb didn't have to be perfect and this is why. You can take the edge of that burner and when you're cutting in these small fine lines and fix the barb. Okay, I kind of did a little bit of it there. You can see I'm kind of moving it slightly to the right and I'm cutting down on that barb to help make it perfect. So if you're doing this, you're going to want to put uh, your pencil lines in and then work down to those barbs. And th these will be a bunch of fine lines. And you can see I don't try to burn one line from the center all the way out to the edge of the, the feather. This one I'm, I'm not going to finish. The, they all read together. It doesn't look like I did three separate or four separate deals to get to the edge of this. But you'll notice when I get to the uh, the the, the um, cut there, the barb in that where the feathers are not aligned, I'm, I'm going under the one that I'm going to do on top. So my, my finger there, there's two fingers that are resting on the right side of that feather. That next section there is going to be over this section underneath here. And you can see I'm kind of curving those out where I think a feather would go. And again, if you're, if you're doing something like this and you want it to look realistic, and that's always kind of my goal, it's going to look like you carved it. I don't care what you do. Well, I shouldn't say that. There are, are some folks out there, um, uh, bird carvers and wildfowl file, or just standard carvers, that can carve something so realistic. Uh, I don't think I'm one of them. I can get close, but I, I can't get perfect. Although a couple of the baby birds look like they're, as you look at them, they look like they're a real bird sitting in your hand. And that, that's kind of my goal. 
but it's uh, the other part of it is the artistic part of it, which we all need to, a little bit to take a break from the craziness going on in the world. Is uh, do something uh, with your hands. So you've seen me do this a thousand times. This brass brush needs replaced. I think it's a two or three dollar brass brush that comes from uh, any hardware store. And then I use it. And I take the off, and you can see kind of the white shining through on that one part right there left of my thumb that's the part that didn't get burned and I'll go back and I'll pick that up so in the feather series how do you go about this later on I, I threw the the original piece back in here but here's a piece I was playing around with just to show you how the different feathers uh, feather groupings would go together so you would lay out the pattern on that and I will show you that a little bit later in here but then I'm going to go back and burn and I'm, I'm cleaning up the barb and this is a group of feathers and as I was farting around with it, it kept getting smaller and smaller because it's a really thin piece and uh, I just kept messing around with it to goof around thinking I might have something that you could see but you'll notice on each side of the feather I'm working one side and then I'm going to come back and do the second side now on each of these feathers and there's that barb clean up in the middle there so the top feather on the upper right there is over the feather I'm working on and that one is slightly under the one on the right side. This is not a real good demonstration, but if you're doing a bird, you can see how you could lay those feathers out and contour and cave them, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later on. So you can get all the feathers rolling down into a pattern. You can see I've already done one pass on this and then uh, went back with uh, one of the ruby bits because I didn't like the way the shape was on them and the way it was flowing and cleaned it up a little bit so that that made me have to go back and, and burn it you see that barbs messed up so I'm, I'm kind of tacking on it there now here's working on the other side this is before I go and take take a lot of this carbon off but I get a cohesive feather pattern in here and that's kind of what you're going for at least and, and and this is kind of a unique style this is this is something that I don't see a lot of other people doing this is more of my style, and I, I, I will. I can do this with a stone, and I will do it with a stone if I'm going to paint it. Something like this, and the baby birds, and various different things. You know, I like to. If you're a subscriber, uh, you know, I like to. I like the burn on them, and I like the way it looks. So this is where it starts to break, because it's a thin, thin piece, and. I was, I was bored with whatever I was doing when I did this, and I thought, well, man, it might be nice to show these people how, how you, I put this together. And there we go. There's a piece that was about trying to break off, and it does eventually break off because it's too thin, and I didn't get the design in there. But I wanted to show you on this feather deal. I figured this was appropriate. I had this little piece of video. I have another section where this is actually still in a scrap piece. All right, so there's the back of it, and I'm not going to paint. I'm not going to painfully show you this. I was looking at it, and I was staring at it, and I thought, man, this might I might be able to to uh, give this away or sell it, because the back of that piece I was just working on looked like a feather in and of itself. And there's nothing better than you know Bob Ross used to say, "Happy accident." So I turned this over, and I thought, man, the back of this thing looks like a feather too. How cool would that be if I had a, a if I did a feather on the back? with the splits, which is what I'm putting in now, and then guess what happened? Too thin, and it broke. Poof. So I won't give up, and I'm not gonna bore you and do this whole back of the feather because I'm doing the big feather and showing you how that goes, and you will get that part of it. So that was the concept. This thing turned out to be a piece of scrap, and I threw it away, but it was fun. I don't remember what I was working on, but I was getting tired of it and I just kind of wanted to space out for a little while. And so I started playing uh, with this. Like I said, the, uh, the dust collector is coming in. I, I still kind of owe you a one over the world on the bandsaw. I've got, uh, I have been working on the Raven uh, on there. I did a couple of pieces in the middle I took 
a couple weeks ago we had the family reunion I think I told you about that last time and I, I took down uh, six or seven carvings and the reason I did that is I had a niece that uh, uh, didn't have one and here's how I, this, this is a little owl that I'm setting up and uh, the reason I'm doing the uh, playing with the owl I'm, I'm gonna do a couple of owls and I'll film those but I, I took six or seven carvings down and my wife's uh, 90 plus year old aunt was there I owed my niece's uh, girls the two girls a couple of carvings and owed a couple of other people little bird carvings and stuff I, I take those with me a lot of times when we go down and visit family but I took what I, I counted all the women up that I was going to give uh, carvings to and uh, my brother-in-law I gave him a birdhouse an old man birdhouse and then I was I was had him on the table and I let him pick by age and when they, everybody got done picking and I wasn't paying attention because there were relatives all over the place and I was just enjoying the fact that people actually liked the little birds and the carvings and stuff and uh, I think I had a hummingbird in there and an owl and uh, some baby birds and that sort of stuff but I ended up with a hummingbird left and hummingbird was just on a wire and my niece who already has uh, I gave her six eight months ago I gave her a big loon because she wanted one was staring at it and smiling at me and I said yeah you can have that and then uh, my cousin's significant other she came out of the room back room and was looking and I was like oh shit I screwed that up I, I had counted her in the group and so I went over to her and I said I'm sorry I apologize uh, I actually brought enough for you but I, I forgot you were not in the group here so you tell me what you want and I'll carve you a special carving and she said she grinned and she said I want an owl because they just bought a house and uh, the out in the country and, and they have an owl out there so I'm, I'm gonna build her a really special owl carving and she's gonna come out way ahead on this because I felt like a bonehead I didn't count the right number of people I actually did but I wasn't watching the number of people in the room so lesson be learned if you're given carvings away and you're given four or five or eight carvings away to relatives or friends or whatever the case may be make sure you hold one in reserve and uh, or two in the reserve in the car or have them in the background so this is a little owl I was playing with the design it goes in with the feather concept and uh, he's kind of unique I did not put glass eyes in him because he's just a little baby concept uh, goofy thing and I, I will re repaint that and I'll probably show you the video he'll show up in a couple of other videos when I get around to it so we were talking about the feathers that feather grouping that I just broke just before this and I told you the silly story of, of not being able to count um, and I, I don't remember who said it but someone said hey how come you never give the guys carvings and I said I have no idea it's just a lot more fun to watch ladies uh, with little birds and stuff and I guess I just don't think guys are that interested in a lot of this stuff other than how to do it uh, now my brother-in-law I give him bird houses and loons and that sort of stuff and he gets a kick out of that I like to give or sell carvings to people who appreciate them uh, it makes me feel good and it makes it kind of valid and the, the best thing of all is it gets rid of these things I'm gonna do them so they need to go somewhere they either need to be given away or they need to be sold so the shading that I'm doing on this you saw I burned in a feather pattern I'm gonna take a ruby bit and I'm gonna make this part that I'm drawn with the pencil lower and then I'm gonna contour one feather up over the other kinda of like you've seen before and you can see how thin that is so I'll draw the outline of the feather and you can see why I don't really need to draw uh, that carefully I like to freehand feathers even if I'm doing a competition piece and there's a little bit more uniformity to a feather I do like to freehand them there's some great people carving out there uh, there might even be a few links down below uh, and I won't mention any folks because what I'm gonna I'm gonna say is slightly derogatory um, their feathers are too uniform so although the feathers on a bird are relatively all the same they get larger and smaller as they change on there they don't they're not like a fish scale fish scales are uniform feathers in my brain are just like fish scales or dragon scales 
that sort of thing. But they're, they're not completely uniform. One will stick over another and you'll only see a portion of it. What you're seeing here is the very tip of what would, in theory, and looking at the size of these feathers, would be about two or three inch feathers. But you, you can see you're only catching the last half inch of that feather. So there, I, you can see I, I, I contoured those down. I'm putting the barbs in. These barbs look ridiculously fat, and the reason they do is I was, I was doing it pretty quick. But remember what I said about that barb. You can come back when you're doing the individual uh, feather pieces on the left and the right of this, and you can correct that barb in the center. So I don't know if you can hear it or not in the, in the voiceover, but the, we've got a heck of a thunderstorm going down here, and, and I hope that uh, the recording works out like it should. So lots going on in the world down here. Uh, I'm busy, extremely busy. I, I want to get back to, I got to get caught up and I, I've been doing a lot of weird stuff. Uh, I, oh, I even, uh, I put in a vent fan in one of the bathrooms in the, in the, in the house, in the cabin here that didn't have a vent in and it was a nightmare because the, uh, it was, the framing was wacky where you thought there wouldn't be framing. There was, and apparently there was a door there. So it was a pain in the butt. There's Groot. He decided to come out and take a look. It was a cool enough day that I had the door open. You can see my mess. And he decided he just needed a little help. But uh, I ended up making a gnome door because I had to cut two inches up higher off the baseboard to get the to find the uh, get the power wire to go down through the wall. I pulled the trim on the bottom. Normally you can drill down through the trim and cheat. And this I could not ended up cutting up into the siding uh, of the cabin. So I ended up putting a gnome door in there. Uh, I asked, asked my wife if that was all right, rather than having a big piece of trim. So right beside the toilet in one of the bathrooms is a gnome door now. And I carved the trim in. But here's the finish. So we had to take a pause there because the furnace kicked or the air conditioner kicked on. All I'm doing here, this is the end of the video. It's it's the end of the garbage that I put together uh, today. I'm, I'm putting those splits in a little bit deeper. And uh, this feather will probably go down to the gallery. I don't know. People seem to like them. Uh, they're, they're interesting. They're a lot of fun to do, and they're, they're quite relaxing. It looks like a lot of work in this, but probably got maybe two hours in this and it's not it's mindless work now you can see just a, on that silhouette there I should have filmed it a little better you can see the splits but uh, that's how we go about making a feather so if you're interested in making a feather or whatever subscribe I'll probably do a few more and uh, hey thanks a lot if you haven't subscribed do so it helps the channel out if you want to buy me a coffee that's all down there hey thanks a lot this has been Ben with Studio on the Lake